Okay, so it's very likely that if you've ever come within a country mile of a competitive shooter, you've had some sweaty tryhard try to evangelize you about the benefits of stretching your in-game resolution. From 4.3 to 16.10 to frickin' 5.4. Everybody who's anybody is doing it. Simple. Bolo. Hell, even those G-fueled Fortnite kitties all prefer to bang out against those wide, thick with two Cs player models. Why? Because by most top competitors' lights, it's one of those things that just feels better. What we want to figure out is whether it's actually better. Okay, so first things first, what is a stretched resolution and how does one enable it? As I'm sure most of you are aware, most if not all modern video games are played in a native resolution of 1920 by 1080 and a default aspect ratio of 16.9. And for the vast majority of titles, you stick to 1920. The outlier, of course, is shooters. First person, third person, doesn't matter. If there is a way to run that shit in stretched, somebody will. Why? Well, we'll get to that. For now, Let's talk about what it entails. Stretching a resolution requires reverting your game to a smaller non-native aspect ratio, most commonly 4.3, 16.10, and 5.4, in that order, and full screening it such that the black bars that would normally appear on the sides are replaced with a reduced yet widened field of view. How exactly do you do this? Well, it depends on the game. In Siege, for instance, it is extremely straightforward. You go to Options, click Display, and simply lower your aspect ratio. You don't even need to touch the resolution. In Counter-Strike, however, which is where all of this stretched business got its start, and where we'll be focusing the bulk of our attention, it's a tad more complicated. Go to Video Settings, change your aspect ratio to 4.3 or 1610, and choose whichever lowered resolution you prefer. Next, right-click your desktop, open your NVIDIA control panel, go to adjust desktop size and position, check the full screen box, and click apply. For those who own AMD cards, go to Amazon, Newegg, etc., type GeForce into the search bar, buy yourself a real graphics card, and keck wait for it to show up in the mail. Memes aside, I literally have no idea how you do this with an AMD card. I didn't even know people still bought AMD cards. Whoa, whoa, Dimitri, slow your roll. I don't know how much you actually know about graphics cards, considering you spend most of your time simping for flom and being wildly okay at retakes, but it's not 2010 anymore. AMD's come a long way as far as hardware and software is concerned. As long as you aren't trying to play Minecraft with ray tracing on or do what I do for a living, then the AMD cards can actually offer a better price to performance ratio than the high-end NVIDIA cards. And according to the fine folks over at LTT, you can actually get better performance in CSGO with an AMD card. So checkmate, nerd. Wait, hold on. Is Colton allowed to just insert himself into my videos like that? Dick. Okay, back to talking about stretched. Now, keep in mind, this will make your game look like shit. It's just a question of how shit. The highest 4.3 resolution is 1440 by 1080, so it comes closest to preserving the HD look of 16.9. The issue is that it also makes it look somewhat jagged. The smoothest, cleanest, and so-called god res is 1280 by 960, which is what the vast majority of professional players use. Now, you can go even lower, of course, which a lot of competitive players do, since it can increase visibility. This comes at the cost of increased blurriness, though, so it's up to you to decide what scans best to your eye. Now, if you're interested in the story of how Stretched came to be, and how it was essentially popularized by Counter-Strike legend Get Right, you can check out our offbeat on ROPS, who for a long time was pretty much the only truly top-tier professional to run his game in a native resolution. Personally, if you ask me why would I pick 16 by 9, then I think it's just logic because why would you pick a resolution that's small but you, the, the, the other one is literally giving you more more field of view i have like a situation every day in my in my practice maybe that i see a guy that my teammate doesn't you know it's it's very often these things happen okay so why play and stretch why would somebody willingly sacrifice 
pretty much half their field of view, speed everything up, and make their skins look like shit. Well, for starters, because it makes the player models bigger. Depending on what resolution you run, you can decide just how wide you want your boys to be. Whereas 1610 makes them only a tad beefy, 4.3 really gives them some girth. 5.4 is straight up wide Putin. Now, in theory, this is a good thing. Bigger targets make easier for Boomstick to click head, right? Well, in a sense, yes. But, as with all things nerdy and scientific, it's not that simple. Is it true that Stretched stretches out the player models, making them easier to see and theoretically hit? Yes. The issue is that it stretches out everything else as well. Your crosshair, view model, the world around you. Remember, in physics, everything is relative, even esports. The downside to this, of course, and the thing that I personally hate the most about Stretched, is that it gives everything the illusion of moving faster. Given that everything is traversing more pixels to make the same movement, everything from you, your sensitivity, and the enemy player models scream across your screen, giving things a sort of arcadey feel, which, hey, a lot of people really like. I use 1280 by 960 stretch because it makes everything a lot more big and easy to see. And also, it makes the game feel faster, which in the end makes it feel more fun for me. The reason for this, of course, is that Stretched literally accentuates everything you do. From one taps, to stutter steps, to spray control, Stretched has a tendency to make everything feel more granular or molecular. The theory is that since being discovered in the early 2010s, it's afforded players with a sort of hyper-awareness that permits them to play better. I felt like the, the, the models itself became more fatter in a way, or like more dragged out. I feel like you can hit them more easier, uh, and you can actually feel the sprays itself, it was like actually hitting more and more. Um, and I think that's basically why I started using it, it's because it felt more smoother in general when I walked around and like bunny jumping or shooting and spraying and all that kind of stuff. For years, the general consensus has been that resolution is just a matter of preference. But with Siege Superstars, Fortnite Phenoms, and the vast majority of CSGO's most elite competitors all running widened resolutions, you can't help but wonder, is there not some objective sense in which Stretched is, as we Counter-Strike stands often say, just better? In an effort to find out, I sat down with Madison Klarkowski, a professor of computer science at the University of Saskatchewan who specializes in computer-human interaction. She explained that while there's still tons of actual, hard-nosed, scientific research to be conducted on this topic, it could very well be that the widespread use of Stretched at the highest levels of play could be suggestive of the fact that it's, well, better. Well, obviously there is something there, right? It can't just be, um, the, to use like the traditional meaning of the word meme, it can't just be some social meme that's being adopted, right? There has to be. So I, I, I'm sure that there is something um, there that is assistive to, to the pros, to anyone who uses stretch res and finds it helpful to them. Remember earlier when I qualified the whole bigger player model thing by pointing out that it's relative? Well, according to Professor Klarkowski, that relativity may not matter. When you're playing, you know, you're focused on the target. You're not focused on the walls around you, which are larger, the corridor, which is larger, right? So by making that model, um, I guess, relatively larger, it might not matter that the surrounding environment, that the other items on screen are, assets on screen are also larger because, you know, the holy grail, the item that you are actually focusing on, is larger itself, so that's the target that you're tracking. She also speculated that the difference in speed may not be as important as the difference in size. That it might actually be easier for certain players to acclimatize themselves to hitting a faster, larger target, as opposed to a slower, skinnier one. Let's assume, like, hypothetically that, you know, a flicker does better with someone, like, fast movement than a tracker, right? Because a flicker just has to go from A to B to get to that, you know, resting point or that standing point um, of the of their target, right? People who are, you know, in this hypothetical world where flickers can keep up with those faster targets better, you might find that they 
prefer the mode for that reason or that they adapt more quickly to the mode for that reason. Of course, the most commonly spouted downside to stretched is the fact that you're chopping away half your field of view. The question is whether you need it. Now, true enough, it is fairly common for someone to get 4-3'd, meaning that they missed an enemy who they otherwise would have seen had they been playing in native. But when you use like a 69 or sushi, you see so much more and you can notice that when you're sitting and watching like a match, a professional match, and you see like an enemy just walking past, like, oh my God, how can he miss that? But then you're like, for free. Because he's pushing out with no cover and Alu's just hiding behind the rock. He'll spot him. Does he see him? Does he see him? Four by three. Four no. by three. There's no way he didn't see him on the right side. No way. They walk right past each other. What kind of circus is this? But for the most part, that lost FOV isn't something you're going to miss. Especially since, as most competitors will tell you, playing in stretched allows you to focus doubly on what you do see. 4x3 all day, 1024 black bars, bro, that's how we roll. 4x3, that makes it easier to want them. 4x3, more tunnel vision. What's really cool is that according to Professor Klarkowski, there's already an accepted term for this type of tunnel vision. There's this concept called inattentional blindness. And this concept um, describes the filtering out of visual stimuli that your brain determines to be non-essential. Well, it can be detrimental when you miss out on critical information because you get it's, it's about the tunnel vision, right? But it may be that, you know, actually um, emphasizing this and f emphasizing tunnel vision and, you know, emphasizing inattentional blindness and the removal, the filter of non-essential visual stimuli is what makes playing in stretch resin 4.3 so potent. So is stretched better or is it just a fad that's taken on the illusion of being better? Well, obviously without some actual rigorous study, there's no way to know for sure. But there's no denying the fact that ostensibly, it can't just be preference. There's gotta be more to it than that. No, I think there has to be something to it. I mean, if the majority is doing it, then I guess it's, it's, not, it's not just for the fun of it. There is something to it. And it's something that would benefit from further exploration. I mean, you can't just, you know, discount the opinion of many, many, many experts who are choosing this alternative um, display method. In Fortnite, for instance, Epic straight up banned stretched resolutions from competitive play, invoking the ire of competitors everywhere. One of the things that lends credence to this theory is the fact that when they were designing Valorant, Riot actively tried to make it so that you couldn't play in stretched, since by their reckoning, you shouldn't need to. Now, whether this was because they thought of it as actually offering a competitive advantage, or just because they wanted their game to look pretty while streamers broadcasted it to the masses, one thing is for sure. It sparked a conversation about the science behind Stretch. So I'd be interested to see what prompted them to say that. Like, is there data that they have? Um, is that data, you know, from expert players? Or is it, you know, do they actually have telemetry data? Do they have performance data? That would be really interesting to know if like maybe Riot does have an idea of what um, the driving factors behind any advantage from from stretch res, any competitive advantage from stretch res might be. It could also be that different games have different so-called god reses. Remember, CSGO and Valorant have different FOVs, different visibilities. Hell, in Siege, you can even adjust your FOV, rendering stretched at least marginally less enticing. There's no shortage of high-level Valorant players talking about how 16.9 just hits different. And while I'm actually inclined to agree, we can't really know for sure since there's no point of comparison. Is 16.9 legitimately better or is there some sort of Stockholm syndrome going on? Of course, as Professor Klarkowski was apt to point out, we won't know until we start subjecting the constituents of these various shooters to different kinds of experiments. What we do know is that contrary to popular belief, res might honestly not just be a matter of preference. The ideal approach would be getting telemetry data um, and, you know, seeing people's performance versus their chosen resolution native or stretched. Do they tend to um, rely more on flicking or are they trackers or are they entry fraggers or are they orpers? And it would be really, really interesting to see if there was some kind of association between play style and chosen res. And once we have that information, I think that would then allow us to delve a little deeper and make more, um, I guess, not really conclusions, but um, inferrals about what exactly stretch res could be helping. 
So while playing stretched won't instantly turn you into a god, who's to say that it won't give you that slight little added advantage in your journey to become one? Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.